All right, then we'll do, uh, then we'll get through the electric field today, all right, and electric forces and how those work. And I actually got in and was working your homework problems, and the th three of the homework problems, they were hard. I was like, holy smokes. So I'll probably have to model how to solve those. In other words, we'll probably do them in class uh, because they would be good test questions for later on, even though they were, I'd have to tone them down just a little bit. But they kind of showed, I, I liked them because they showed a relationship between what you were supposed to learn last semester and what's going on this semester. So let's go ahead and turn on this projector. Now this is going to work just like the clicker thing. So as you go through the slide, you know, you'll have one and you can pick A, B, or C. And if you get, the, get it wrong, just cross it out and put the right answer, okay? Because we're not, we're not going to grade these things by any means. But I am going to collect them at the end of the hour, give them to my boy Yang, and he's going to input them. So you'll start getting grades in your, in your uh, uh, thing. So, and this crew over here, I'll, I'll read aloud, all right? And maybe there's... And, and then we got the bright windows back there. This is just great. Okay. Yesterday, however, I've already told some of you, yesterday I did a great thing. I went to the wrong class. So I went to teach the wrong, I'm going, where the hell are these people? There's supposed to be 140 of them. Why aren't they here? Well, dummy, they're not, you're in the wrong place. Okay, this, why is it, uh, huh. Okay, so I'm going to use this one then. Okay, Does, is that what's showing up on your screen? Well, I'll be darned. Okay, here we go. Chapter 15, um, start slideshow from beginning. There we go. And I think I have to do this. There we go. All right, here's your first question. <laughs> And we'll be, I don't know, I'm in an ornery mood. So when I see two charged balls, I don't know what I'm thinking. But anyway, all right, two, all right, sorry. Two charged balls are uh, repelling each other as they hang from the ceiling. What can you say about these charges? Two char look at the way that, now what that means is they're repelling each other. So what do we know about these charges? One is positive, the other is negative. Both are positive. Both are negative, both are positive, or both are negative. Which is your correct answer? D. All right, D. Good, very good. Very good. Because like charges repel, opposite charges attract. Okay. Ta-da. There you go. The fact that the balls reach... All we know is that they are, is that they are like charges. As I, I heard Caleb say, they're the same. So that's, that's all we knew. Okay. All right. All right, now, here's question two. From this picture, those of you on the side, there's a picture. We got, we got a green, and we got a uh, fuchsia, all right? Ball separated. And an olive, dra olive and lemon yellow. My wife was picking out sheets, and she was asking me, you know, when she's going through her catalog there. Like, you care, but you don't, you know what I mean? So, anyway. So I was, oh, buffed wheat, that's the way we should go. But anyway, um, from the picture, what can you conclude about the charges? See, uh, all have the same charge. One ball must be neutral, no charge. Which is it? B, they have the same charge. Well, this one just deals with this case. Well, yeah, we can say this one, but they all have the same charge. I think it's C. Let's move on. Yes. Yeah, they, they all have the same charge. So that was what? Question number two? All right. Slide four. There's like 45 slides here, but we're not going to do them all because we haven't covered the whole chapter by any stretch. Okay. Here we go. Now, this is not a magnet. Don't be confused. This is not a magnet. This is just showing that it's got a positive charge down here. A metal ball hangs from the ceiling by an insulating thread. The ball is attracted to a positive charge rod held near the ball. The charge of the ball must be B. B. Or is it E? B. 
Okay, now remember, things can be polarized. Remember the balloon and the wall. Okay, if you rub the balloon and it gets a bunch of negative charge or positive charge on it, and you hold it close, this wall is neutrally charged, right? But when, I, but when I put something with a lot of negative charge next to it, what happens? The electrons kind of back off, and, and the, uh, well, the, the, what happens is the atoms in there kind of flip over. So the electrons kind of get away, and, the, and then the protons are sticking at this end. All right, so with that inf added information, which could it be? E, I think, I hope. Boy, yes, hey, ta-da. See, here's what it's saying. It's saying, uh, don't forget, these things can be neutrally charged also. Okay? All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, this is good. What, what question was that? That was three? Okay, Chasey, the answers were, what were they? D, C, and E? Okay, D, C, and E were your first three questions. All right? There you go. Okay, so don't get them wrong. All right, now that we've pointed out that Chasey was late, anyway. Okay, now, two neutral conductors are connected by a wire. Okay, so we're going to look, so two neutral conduct conductors are connected by a wire and a charged rod is brought near. Okay, we're going to assume that the wire is also conducting. So that those electrons, Southwest Airlines, are free to move about the wire too. Okay, so they, they'll rush over. Okay, uh, but does not touch. The wire is taken away and then the charged rod is removed. What are the charges on the conductors? Okay, so here's the situation. They're conducting. So that means, so that means since they're conductors, if something's an insulator, it can be polarized, okay? But if it's a conductor, that means those electrons are free to move, okay? So, put this positive charge here. So what's going to happen with this positive charge here? What's going to happen to all the negative charges over here? They're going to come across over here, right? They're going to be running across over here. And then, so if I hold this, so when I hold this here, then it's going to be like this. So what's this going to look like? What's Yeah, it'll probably look like C because, because these charges are going to go this way. Now remember, it's the electrons that move. Protons don't. Those of you that know chemistry better than I do know that. That, that lattice structure, the, that strong nuclear force kind of keeps those protons right there. All right. So what did we say the answer was? C. Yes. Good. Good. And I like it when my explanation, I, I hate it when I explain something that is wrong. That's like, might as well cancel class and move on. Okay, are you all getting this? Is this showing up on the thing? Okay, cool, good. Everything's working. We don't even need this then. I don't think, do we? We do need it? I don't know either. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, Coulomb's Law, all right. Okay, you go to physics camp, you sing the song Coulomb's Law. But anyway, no, kidding. Um, Supposed to, sorry. Anyway, uh, you have no idea what this is all about, so your quiz is now over. All right, so now we're ready to get to Coulomb's Law. I'm going to turn this uh, projector off, and we will actually talk about forces. Okay, and we'll turn the lights on. Yeah, hold on to those until the end of class, and then we'll collect them. Don't forget to put your name on them. And when you turn them in, how many of you are vidiots? I'm taking my video class. Okay, Sarah and... No! Oh, thing. I, I know who he is. I could go look up the picture. All right, those of you that are my vidiots, um, if you want to come to class and get your those points that way, put start a separate stack so I can just kind of have your own score, okay, type thing. All right. Okay, so anyway... Here we go. Now, here's what's going on. Two charges. Here we go. First of all, here's, the first, here's one of the first things you're going to have to know. Uh, the charge, we measure it in coulombs. We measure charge in coulombs. I think I spelled that right. I'm pretty sure I spelled it right. That's the way we measure charge. Okay? And an electron and a proton have the same charge. 
and uh, Q of an electron, and, and we usually measure it Q or little q. Okay? Now, a coulomb is a very, very large amount of charge because a bolt of lightning is between 9 and 20 coulombs, depending on how big a bolt of lightning is. Okay? So we're going to be dealing in things like micro coulombs. This is micro. This is the way I write micro. Okay? Or nano coulombs. This is 10 to the negative 6. This is 10 to the negative 3, no, negative 9, uh, or milli. Okay, so there's very little difference between my micro and milli coulombs, which would be, this is milli, and that's 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so that's, mainly we hang out in here. And you'll also see this thing, P coulombs. This is something new. I'm glad I did your homework first so that I could warn you. This is called... P, what's P? Pico? Pico? What? How do you say it? Pico? You, you chemistry people? Okay. This is Pico coulombs. coulombs. That's 10 to the negative 12. And two of your answers on your homework wants the thing in Pico coulombs. That's kind of fun to say, actually. You can probably do some kind of rap to that. But anyway, um, so, uh, so you got these Pico coulombs and. Um, They've got all you do, you're going to do all your work in coulombs, and then when you get done, multiply times 10 to the 12th power. And that'll give you your answer in pico coulombs. Okay? All right. So coulombs is now Q of E. Now here's what the charge of an electron equals in magnitude the charge on a proton, which equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Or 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7 picocoulombs, if you wanted to do it in the way the book likes to give their answers. All right. Now notice, we're doing everything in magnitudes. So what we do, uh, what we do in this class is we draw the picture and we figure out what the direction is vice doing cross products. Yes? What's the difference between those two um, sub-E's on there? This is an E. That's an E? Yeah, don't you, can't you, Sarah, come on now, help a brother out. This is an E, electron, and this is a proton. There we go, no, it's, it's hard to tell. There's a, the charge, in other words, the charges are the same. What's very, very different, and those of you in chemistry know this very, very well, is the mass of an electron. These are just some things you just kind of, maybe you can win a bar bet someday, you know. Go, hey, I know what the mass of electron is. Oh, you do not. Yes? Yep, yep. Did I say negative 12? Yeah. Okay. What he said, what Mr. Brenner said, change it, don't listen to me. Change it to uh, 10 to the 12th, right. Okay, now, I do know this. Times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, that's the mass of an electron. Okay, and then the mass of a proton, anybody know the mass of a proton just off the top of your head? Yeah, it's less than one, greater than zero. It's real close to zero. It's 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. That's the mass of a proton, okay? So they've got very different masses. The mass of a neutron is about the same as a proton. Okay, but notice, there's a factor of four difference almost between these two because uh, the... the um, it's almost, it's like almost 10,000 times greater the mass of a proton is than the mass of an electron. Okay, so there's kind of what's going on. Uh, there's the charge and the masses. Now, if I have two things next to each other, let's figure out the number of charge that something has. Okay, let's, let's figure out how many electrons, and this is the way we measure charge. Q equals... Now, these are just givens. You can never get smaller. That This is the smallest amount of charge that you can ever have in the universe. You can't get any smaller than this. Okay? If we split that electron in half or that proton in half, if, I don't know what happens. But you just can't get any smaller than that. Okay? All right? So, 
so here's how you measure how many electrons something has if it's negatively charged. How many ex if it has a net charge of something, you can figure out how many excess, excess electrons it has. Or if something has a charge, the charge is actually equal to this. The number of electrons times QE. Okay? This is just the number of electrons times QE. Okay? So, let's look at this example. Let's, in fact, in fact, let's do this since we're here. Since we're here and I have your undivided rapt attention, hold on a second, and I will go to, oh, I should have done this earlier. I apologize. Master in physics. I'm good. Let's do a homework problem that deals with this, or maybe two. Hey, it remembered me. Are you getting this on the computer thing? You getting the mastering physics thing? No? I need to do it on this one, don't I? What's that? Oh, it, 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 it wasn't working on this one either? Oh, okay. They're <laughs> coming clean back there. The, all right. So, if, so the people at home are not getting to witness this, so I, I've got to make sure that I, that I do this correctly. Courses, let's go to the courses, and this is 220. Let's go to chapter 15. Uh, exercise. Okay. Okay, here's the question. Here's the question. It says, this is exercise 15.2 on your homework. Mine said, now remember, you're going to have randomized variables, so you might have more. It, it says this. It says, um, in walking across a carpet, you acquire a net. So this is ex problem 15.2. It says, in walking across a carpet, I acquire a net negative charge of 40 microcoulombs. So Q equals 40 microcoulombs, and I'm just going to right away write that as 40 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, and it's negative, okay? And it's negative because I've got a net negative charge is what it told me, all right? How many electrons is that going to be? How, do you, how are we going to find, so what we want to do is we want to find N. So what would we do? If we know this guy, we know this guy, what are we going to do? Divide, right. So N is equal to Q, this Q, divided by QE. So that comes out to be negative 40 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Notice my coulombs cancel, so all I'm left with is a number, and that's about, what, 2.8, 2.5? times 10 to the 7th, or 10 to, no, 10 to the 13th, which should be about what it is. Let me do it real quick. Now, the way I also do scientific notation, just for, you're going to have to do a lot of scientific notation in this class, because everything's going to be to the negative 6, negative 19, negative 31, negative 27, those kinds of things. So what I always do is, I just type it in this way in my calculator. I just put negative 4.0 and then hit that double E to the negative 6 and then close parentheses divided by parentheses 1.6 uh, double E to the negative 19. Okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and figure out what this answer is real quick. And I also got to remember that two point five. Yeah, I was right. I did it in my head. That was good. Two point five times ten to the thirteenth, thirteenth electrons. That's how many there are. Now then, to put that in, to put that on mastering physics, what do you do? You go two point five. Asterisk, 10, then you drop down the thing, 
the, you drop down the little thing, it helps you put in the exponents. It'll be right there. And you put in the 13th. Okay? Yes? Oh, negative. Oh, I put in negative 40. I put in negative 40. I, I don't try and outguess it because if I put in 4.0, then I'd have to change it times 10 to the negative 5. Does it? This does? Oh, 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 yeah. So the bottom one, negative 2 as well? The 1.6? Yeah, it should be negative also. Because the number of electrons should be a positive number of electrons. The two negatives. Why is it to the what? It's to the 14. Really? Yeah. Oh, I did. I did. I did. Huh. See, these things are fraught with peril. All of the, thank you, Rashida. Yes. Why'd you make it negative? When you converted it, you mean negative four point zero? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
emphasize that enough for this course, for this class. Magnitude. Input the, use the magnitude of the charge, which means the absolute value of the charge. You've already, you've already t by looking at the um, geometry of the picture, you've already determined which way it's going. Okay? In uh, physics, the only difference between 220 and 250 is 250, they use the cross products and stuff like that, and the negative charge, uh, the, the direction of the thing spills out. We draw the picture first and go, oh, this is the direction the forces would be going. And then we just do it this way. We go K. Here's a new constant for you, K, which is equal to <laughs> 1 over 4 pi times echo naught, where echo naught is equal to the permittivity, permittivity, these are all new words for you, of free space. What the heck is that? The permittivity of free space. Basically, remember big G in gravity? We, well, we needed a constant here, too. And so we called it, all right, if we're, out, if we're in a vacuum, then this is how these charges, this is the constant we need for these charges. And so K is actually equal to this, where the permittivity of free space is, uh, shit, I can't even remember what it is. But I do know what K is. It's uh, 9.0 times 10 to the ninth power, and it will be in newtons, newtons, meters squared per coulomb squared. Okay? And permittivity of free space, of course, is just a reciprocal of that. It's in coulomb squared per newton meters squared. Okay? So it's equal to K. Yeah, here's the yeah, it's in newtons, newton meter squared per coulomb squared. That's the way that constant K is, okay? And then you've got times Q1 times Q2. And let's say they're separated by a distance of 0.1 meters divided by, which is R. That is equal to R. You will see it as R as, as the formula, okay? Even though we're not, you could say D. This is one thing it confused some people once, they, they were getting that confused with radius, and I, and I would say the distance between two charges is this, and immediately they'd see D equals, and the first thing they remembered was their algebra class with Ms. Crunchmeister, and they divided D by 2 to get R. No, we're just going to use R equals 0.1 meters over R squared. That's your formula. And this one would be the same thing. It's K times Q2 over Q1 divided by that r squared. This one just happens to be in the negative direction, and this one happens to be in the positive direction. And guess what? That gives you the force between two things, between uh, two charged spheres. All right? That's the forces that they feel. Why would you have to solve them both? Oh, you don't. You don't. I'm just saying we just picked one. We, we just had them both. And notice. They're equal in opposite direction. What law is being applied here? Moon's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This guy's creating a force that's going, this guy, this guy's creating a force that's pushing on that guy this way, so he's going, hey, don't push it back that way. All right? Okay. All right, so now, let's tie all this together. Remember, remember y'all's favorite problems from Physics 210, those tension problems? Hanging things. Well, what happens if we've got two objects? Again, we got two. Uh, here's here's your problem. I was surprised that they actually had this problem in your homework. I was like, wow, that's hard. So, let's do it. Let's do it together. Um, oh, I can call this up on the screen, can I? And then you guys can see it real quick. Okay, let's do that real fast. Uh, let me find the problem. Ah, here it is. This is your problem number 10. Okay, and I'm going to show it to you real quick, and then I'm going to raise this back up and we're going to solve it. Okay? Yeah, we'll step over this again. Turn off the lights. I'll draw it again so you all can see it. You'll be able, can you all see, at least see the board, what we're doing? Sort of, kind of. Maybe. 
All right. And you all too? Can you at least kind of, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, gosh, dang it. Let me turn on the projector. Let me turn on the projector. There it goes. Then I'm going to turn all this off right away so I can work the problem. Oh. Come on now. There it is. Okay, you can't see that at all, can you? Oh, there it is. It's coming a little better. A little better. Look at this. This looks horrible. And it is. It's hard. Okay? All right, now. Here's the, here's, here's the thing. Here's what the problem says. It says 2.18 gram pith balls, <laughs> whatever that is, are suspended. Have you all ever seen a pith helmet? It's kind of like what uh, in the adventures of Colonel McBragg. Did you all ever watch the underdog cartoons when you were little? No, probably not. But anyway, um, uh, af the African safari guys wore pith helmets. They're these things with... Um, these helmets with a real light uh, material spread over them, insulating material. Okay, but anyway, they're like these light insulating materials. So anyway, are suspended from the same point by threads 50 centimeters long. Okay, when the balls are given equal charges, they come to rest 21 centimeters apart. So this distance R is 21 centimeters. Okay. And as the figures show. So I'm going to write down what we know from this thing. And then I'm going to turn everything off. And we're going to work this problem. So here we go. We've got, we've got two spheres hanging like this. This is 0.21 meters. This is 0.5 meters. This is straight down like this. So if this angle is... Uh, congruent to this angle, I use the right phrase there. If this angle is congruent to this angle, what do we know about these two legs right here? They're equal, exactly. So this would be 0 0.105 meters, and this is 0 0.105 meters. Good. Okay, and the mass is equal to 0.18 times 10 to the negative 3 kilograms. Now notice, I don't play with the 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. I just, I just leave it alone. There it is, 0.18. Okay, and, and here we go. I know I've got an mg going this way. And I've got mg going this way. I know I've got this. The four, we'll call this one 1 and this one 2. The force on 2 caused by 1 is going that way. Force on 1 caused by 2 is going this way. I got a tension going up here, the same tension going up here, because, because it's symmetrical, okay? And now, what they want us to do is figure out what is the charge. Oh my gosh, what is Q? That's what we're going to do. When I saw this problem, I went, oh my. This ties in a little bit of everything we've ever learned, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's do it this way. Let's raise the magic screen. Let's turn off the projector because we've got the problem now. And let's just take it from here. Oh, I don't even need to mess with the screen. I can just kind of erase the thing and then okay, so here we go. All right. And this is problem 1510 in your homework. All right, so your numbers will change. Your numbers will be different, but the geometry of the problem is exactly the same. So, here's what we're after. We know this. We know that the force on one caused by two. I'm just going to look at F1 of two. I'm just going to look at. I'm just going to look at pith ball number one here. Okay. So I know that the force on one caused by two is equal to is equal to K times Q1 times Q2. First of all, Q2, Q1 equals Q2. That's, that's also implied in the problem, too. They told us that. They've got equal charge. Divided by 
two one squared. Okay, so the force one two is nine point zero zero times ten to the ninth times q squared over point two one squared. That's the force. Okay. All right, so now I've got to come up with an expression for that force based on everything else that I know. What's that? Very good. It will be negative. It will be negative. Okay. All right, so here we go. All right. So. Let's just, let's just draw the force diagram on that one, all right? So we know that we've got this. In fact, your book, in your, in your problems, they do it like this. They put this angle theta right here. So that causes a little bit of a problem because now I've got the x component of my tension is going to have the sine attached to it, not the cosine. We're so used to having the sine and the cosine attached, but this time it doesn't. Uh, All right, so there we go. So, so here's my t in the x direction, and here's my t in the y direction. I've got f caused by one of two going that way, and I've got mg coming this way. So let's take the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to ty minus mg equals zero. So therefore, t uh, cosine of theta is equal to mg. All right? And so t is equal to mg divided by the cosine of theta. All right. Now, let's take this out. This, I'm going to erase over here, and we're going to walk through and look at the sum of the forces in the x direction. And since this is an equilibrium, guess what happens? Since it's in the, oh, this is all we'll have time to do today. This is good. This is a good place to stop. All right. Yeah. Good enough. All right. So now, here we go. Now, let's take a look at the sum of the forces in the x direction. Some of the forces in the x direction, I've got Tx which is actually t sine theta, tx minus f1 on 2 is equal to 0. So I'll just say tx equals f1 on 2. And tx is equal to, this is just off to the side, so I should probably just put this off to the side. tx is equal to t sine theta. Ah, but what did I say t was equal to? Earlier, equation one, mg cosine theta, right? All right, so here we go. So I know this. Then I've got, so I know that Tx then is equal to mg divided by the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. Which, what's the sine of theta over the cosine of theta? What's that? Yeah. What's the sine over the cosine? Tangent. Yeah. Okay. So we've got mg tangent theta. Yeah, you were saying this. We we're, were having a semantics problem. Mathematical semantics. Tangent of theta is equal to. Now we're ready to do some damage here. Uh, k times q squared over r squared. So q. Wow, so Q squared, let's do a little algebra here, is equal to R squared. That's like I said, I, I got this problem, I went, holy smokes, what am I doing to these people? Their first homework out of this box. Okay, divided by Q, I don't know. I just kind of took their, because it's a cool problem, actually. Now then, what's the only thing I don't know? I know R, I know M, I know G, I know K, what don't I know so far? Theta. Can I figure it out? Pretty darn easy. Because I've got, this is 0.105, 
and this is uh, 0.5, so I can just use the inverse sine, okay? The inverse sine, in other words, theta, theta is equal to the inverse sine of uh, 0.105, or one half, I'm going to do it this way, so that you have a general formula of one half r divided by the length the length of your rope, okay? So, because when you guys do it, you're going to have a different distance between the two and you're going to have a different length. So there's your general equation for it. Wow! And, and when I actually plugged it in, it came out right. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this, this, this is going to be a disaster, I know. But it actually worked! It actually worked. Well, could you expect a problem like this on a test? No. A problem that you can expect on a test is you're going to have two charges. Tell me what the force is on one of them. Okay, or you might have three charges because we can, we can do the vector thing again. All right. Don't forget, we can always do the vector thing. Okay, and break things. We're, we're still going to break things down into their components and everything. But now you know how, to, how charges move about. We'll start with the electric field, and we'll end with Gauss's law on Friday. Oh, yeah, don't forget to turn your thing in.